In this tip and trick, we're going to have a look at creating parameter names on the fly. Um, usually when you create a design inside of Inventor, um, what happens is every single dimension you input is parameterized. So each dimension starting at D0 is built up, and you'll see in this example, it's gone from D0 down to D11. Each one of those is a dimension on a sketch or a feature. If I go and have a look at a sketch, for instance, um, I have I can go and rename by expression and you'll see each one of those is listed. So there's D1 for instance is my overall diameter and D0 is the internal diameter and D2 is the height, D3 is the thickness, etc, etc. And these all match back up to what I have inside of my parameters. And this is normal for any part that you would create using normal modeling techniques inside of Inventor. Right, in an ideal world, what you'd want is for these to be named. So you'll see I've now got ID, minor OD, etc., etc. And this allows me to have a little bit of intelligence. When I look at my sketch, for instance, I can now see I've got my major OD, my minor OD, my ID, a height, and a flange thickness. And basically, this allows me to go into my parameters and I could actually change any of those without having to know what D number they are. I could physically update my model. So if I started from scratch for instance um, and I had a look at a sketch as I add these dimensions I can add these in on the fly so for instance I could type in height equals 25 and that is added straight into my parameters so you'll now see I have height 25 and I can go in and I can add in additional dimensions So for instance, I can have ID equal to 25 as well. And I can then have my OD equal to 50 or 65. And I might want a thickness over here equal to 5. And a flange thickness as well. equal to five millimeters okay so I've got and named all of the parameters inside of here and I can now turn on that visibility <laughs> there we go expression and you can now see the names of all of those parameters and I can finish my sketch and I can go back into my parameters and you can now see I've got height ID OD thickness etc there's still D4 left and you can see D4 is on the sketch so I might want to change the name of D4 maybe to PCD. There we go. So now I have the PCD listed. And I can go and add a hole and I can go quite extreme on this. I can actually say, right, I want hole diameter to be equal to 3. And I have a hole diameter of 3 on the PCD and I can add in a circular pattern and I can say that I would like to have um, holes equal to 20, so now I've got, sorry, 12, so now I've got 12 holes. Instead of having a rotation of 360 degrees, I could actually say rotation equals 360 degrees. So I've physically named every single parameter thus far. I can go so far as to naming the fillet as well. So I can say fillet equals to, obviously quite an extreme, an extreme case you would never name this many things but it's just showing that you can and we can do the same with chamfers so I can say inside of there major chamfer equals two millimeters and I could then go and add minor chamfers Let's say minor chamfer equals 0.5 millimeters and there we go so now I can go into my parameters and I can clearly see what everything is inside of here so if I wanted to make a change for instance I could change the PCD diameter I could go and change the amount of holes perhaps to 20 and I can then hit update and my model would update so that's just an example of how we can use these and obviously um, you know, 
you can go back and change whatever you like as many times as you want and this will all update from your parameters onto your path there we go small change change the PCD again and it runs an update I'm sure you get the idea that's the basics of running uh, parameters on the fly. Thank you very much for having a look.